Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we're going to talk about cognitive dysfunction syndrome and how it affects cats and dogs. It's a lot more common than people realize and it's very underdiagnosed. So join me, you'll learn something. CDS is a neurobehavioral disorder that affects geriatric dogs and cats and it results in changes to a number of aspects of their behavior. As we see a decrease in cognitive function, it's important for us to define what cognitive function is. Um, so cognitive function is the mental processes of memory, awareness, learning, and perception. Before diagnosis of cognitive dysfunction syndrome can be made, it's very important that we rule out a bunch of very common issues that can cause similar symptoms. Um, pain from arthritis or dental disease or anything else can cause cognitive changes as well. So doing a pain management trial is necessary. We could also be seeing cognitive changes because of a decrease in sensory ability. So if the dog or cat has lost some of their smell or hearing or sight, that will affect their behavior. And so testing for those changes is also important. There could also be a primary behavioral issue, which is less likely, but of course possible, so we need to consider it. And we also need to consider other neurological processes, um, things like seizures or brain tumors or anything else that could cause change in cognitive ability. It's important to diligently work through the list of differentials and rule them in or out one by one before being left with a diagnosis of CDS. To rule out the common differentials that we have to consider before diagnosing CDS, we will need to do a physical exam and this will need to include a neurological and orthopedic exam. We'll also need to do a senior blood work and urinalysis profile. We should also check a blood pressure and then your veterinarian may also recommend some imaging depending on the results from the physical exam and other tests. Um, that would be a bare minimum along with a pain management medication um, before we can comfortably diagnose CDS in any animal. Cognitive dysfunction syndrome is incredibly underdiagnosed and that's part of the reason I'm doing this video is to give people information so that if they do see symptoms that they can work with their veterinarian to address them. A lot of people presume that this is just age related but it's very important that we remember age itself is not a disease. There are just some diseases that become more common in geriatrics. However, that there's often treatments for them and so we need to address them. So we do have some research about prevalence. So in dogs that were 11 to 12 years old, there was a study that found 28% of them had cognitive dysfunction. If you go and look at a population of dogs that are 15 years or older, the number jumps up to 68% of them that had CDS. For cats that were 11 to 14 years of age, there's some research showing that 28% of them had symptoms of cognitive dysfunction. And for cats that are 15 years or older, a good 50% of them had cognitive dysfunction. This is an incredibly common issue. And now that our medical care is better and nutrition is better for our pets, more and more of them are living longer and longer. And uh, so that means that cognitive dysfunction is going to be something that's very important for us to keep an eye out for. There is a canine dementia scale questionnaire that can be helpful to fill out for our dogs. It looks at different areas where you might notice behavior changes. Mild CDS often starts with changes in social interactions. As the disease progresses, seeing changes in sleep-wake cycles is often next to show up in the list of symptoms, but there could be changes in any and all of the four areas. So now we have to think about why does this happen? Well, as mammals age, we know that there is a decrease in brain volume. We see atrophy in the cortex, we see degeneration in the white matter, and we also frequently see an accumulation of plaques building up in the brain. This is 
roughly equivalent to the disease process we call Alzheimer's in humans. The plaques are abnormal protein deposits that build up often starting in the cortex but then spreading to other parts of the brain. The amount and the extent of those plaques does correlate with the severity of symptoms that we notice. We will also see a decrease in endogenous neurotransmitters, so things like dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and we also see a decrease in endogenous antioxidants in mammal brains as they age. And all of these things together combine to result in the behavior changes that we notice in our pets. When we're looking to treat this, we first need to address any pain, any obesity, any other medical issues that are underlying. From there, we can move on and address CDS by starting with some environmental enrichment and modifications. So we do need to be considering things like increasing the number of litter boxes or bathroom trips outdoors, increasing the number of water sources, or making food puzzles perhaps a bit easier, uh, making for cats their vertical enrichment, making it smaller jumps between station to station or building ramps between them, using ramps to get up into bed or into vehicles. All of those sorts of modifications need to occur. There are a number of ways that we can change nutrition in order to help decrease symptoms. One way is to increase medium chain triglycerides from fatty acids. This does help to reduce the protein plaques from forming in the brain. We also have research showing that increasing omega-3 fatty acids along with increasing antioxidants in nutrition helps to reduce symptoms, and so Hills has a BD diet, and Purina also has a Bright Minds diet formulated to help with this. There isn't a great feline-specific option, but the feline arthritis treatment diets, so Royal Canin Mobility and Hills Joint Diet, JD, both of those will have increases in omega fatty acids because that also helps to reduce pain from arthritis. And so using those diets may be appropriate for our cats. We also need to consider S-adenosyl L-methionine. We shorten that down to SAM-E. When it's supplemented, it increases glutathione. The increase in glutathione increases serotonin turnover, which results in an increase in dopamine and norepinephrine. We also have a pharmacologic intervention called selegiline. It goes by the brand name Anapril. It inhibits an enzyme which helps to increase dopamine and also to decrease free radicals. Selegiline does take four weeks in order to see if it is effective for your individual pet. Um, it is on label for dogs, but we do also use it off label for our cats. It's also very important to remember that some of these patients with CDS will demonstrate some anxious behaviors, and so we can also treat those with things like thunder shirts, adaptal and feel away diffusers, i.e., pheromones. We can also use supplements like. Zilken, and there are also prescription medications that can be used to reduce the anxiety as well if that is needed. It does require very closely working with your veterinarian to come up with a creative, personalized plan that implements the things I've mentioned in this video in a way that targets the needs that your pet has. Um, this is a very important part of treating CDS and it often requires some trial and error along with adjustments as time passes in order to find the thing that works best. We also need to remember to very carefully track quality of life as our pets are more geriatric. And when there comes a point that the symptoms are severe enough that our pet no longer has a good quality of life, then it is very important that we consider euthanasia to prevent prolonged suffering and confusion and distress on the parts of our pets. 
if you are trying to assess your pet's quality of life, please um, watch my previous video on when euthanasia is an appropriate option to consider. I'll link it here and in the description box below. Well, I hope that you found the information in this video helpful. Please like the video if you've learned something that helps me to know if I have shared the information in a way that's helpful for you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.